they would place a tube on a prisoner's back door oh, and insert no. a rat inside of the tube. Oh, the no! rat would then begin to burrow its way in. I don't want a rat in my ass, bro. The worst punishments in human history. Let's start with the bad and slowly work our way towards the stuff of nightmares. Number 10, the rat dungeon. If you were alive in London, England during the medieval period, you would have definitely heard about the rat dungeon. Since this punishment struck paralyzing fear into the hearts of even the most hardened criminals. This was a cell that was located at the bottom of the London Tower, where prisoners were shackled and chained in complete darkness. But here's the thing, yeah. the dungeon was connected to the nearby river and just below the river's waterline, so that when the water levels rose, all the rats that lived along the riverbed would be pushed out of their shelters and forced to swim down stream. This would of course lead the hungry and angry rats towards the entrance of the dungeon, they where they would then come to face with the prisoner. But oh. to the unlucky prisoner, he oh. never actually saw anything, and all he would hear were the soft scurries mm -hmm. of the rat's feet entering the dungeon. Mm -hmm. And in a matter of minutes, these soft noises were in the hundreds and all around him. Holy these angry and aggressive rats would then begin to take small bites oh from the prisoner my God. who had no way of defending himself. Now he might be able to shake the rats off for a few hours, but eventually the prisoner would pass out from pure exhaustion. And while he slept, the rats would continue to take bites from his flesh. Eventually when he would wake up, he would discover hundreds of bites throughout his entire body. I ain't gonna lie, I'm pissed. I'm pissed at that. Like, I'm not gonna lie, that's, that's a terrible way to go out. That's a terrible, that's a terrible way to go out, bro. Getting eaten by f***ing rat, hundreds of rats. Just, uh, just imagine you're sleeping in your bed and you wake up and there's just hundreds of rats just yamming on your sh all on your toes, just sucking on your toes, sucking on your big toe, few nibbling on your fucking nose, huh? Huh? Few gets on your shin, your calf, your t your nipple, like you're fucked. You're fucked. It's not easy work. You're not getting out of that. You're not. You're chained. You're chained. But it didn't stop there. The prisoner was left here for days or weeks on end, depending on his crime. But towards the end of the medieval period, this form of punishment just got more and more deranged, eventually becoming a form of execution, where prisoners would just be thrown in the dungeon and forgotten about. Damn. Number 9. The no rack. food, nothing? This was yet another punishment that took place in the London Tower. The rack was a torture device that was used in many places throughout history. This form of punishment was originally designed for getting a confession, usually from criminals, slaves, or prisoners of war. The device looked like a large ladder, but instead of secure steps, they would actually rotate like a rolling pin. Uh. You see, when a prisoner was placed on the rack, he would have his feet and wrists tied to a ratchet pulley system, where two legal officials would slowly tighten the ropes and locking them in place, placing an increasing amount of strain on the prisoner's shoulders, yeah. hips, knees, and elbows yeah. with every single turn. Yeah. This was all done to get information, but of course, a lot of the times the truth was not accepted as reality and the prisoner would then begin to say whatever he believed the officials wanted to hear. Sometimes it would work and the prisoners would be let go, while other times they would be tortured even more for lying. When the whole ordeal was over, prisoners were usually released with dislocated Fucking joints, hell yeah, but oftentimes they were left completely paralyzed. That was the case in England in 1447 when a 25-year-old girl named Anne Askew would be tortured on the rack for hours and hours on end and for left what? completely paralyzed after all her joints were dislocated. She was then carried on a chair and burned alive at the stake. <laughs> well, fuck me, bro. <laughs> like, 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 fuck me, you're, like, to, to just fuck my life up like that. Yeah, all right, paralyze me. And then, yeah, you're useless now. You're useless now after you're paralyzed. You can't really help with anything anymore, so we might as well kill you. We might as well kill you off because, um, you're nothing. Um, you're a piece of shit. All this because she read and memorized scriptures from the Bible, which she preached in private to a small group of women, which what? were the exact women she refused to name and expose during her torture. You see, during this time period, if you followed any religion other than the Catholic Church, you better not say a word to anybody, including your own husband. He snitched? Which was the person that turned her He around. snitched! Number eight. You gotta be fucking kidding me. You, like, hey man, hey man, you can't trust man i get it woman woman i get it this is why we can't trust man. F men they're pieces of shit. all they want is sex they never pay any attention to us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they always think they're right and you know what i'm tired of being mansplained i'm tired of being mansplained you think you know everything you don't know shit. number eight 
keel hauling. This brutal huh? punishment was carried out at sea on sailors who would steal or be violent towards others and would usually result in death. Keel hauling would start with a sailor having his arms tied with a rope, then looped around the entire circumference of the ship before being tied off to his feet. The sailor would then be thrown overboard while the group of men on board pulled on the rope to slowly drag him around the outside of the ship, including over the keel. Which is That's how this crazy. punishment gets its name. That's but a lot of the times, the sailor wouldn't even have to worry about it, since they were dead before they ever reached it. Kinda just depends on how hard the guys on the rope feel like working that day. Not only were the sailors be drowning and getting their backs and necks broken on the keel, they were also getting sliced apart like a cheese grater by all the sharp splinters, barnacles yeah. on the outside of the ship. Ah. But if by some miracle, a sailor actually happens to make it all the way around the ship without dying, one of three things will happen. One, he would be sent for round two sure be dead by then you should give me my props for surviving it like i feel like yo you made it all the way around that bro good sh good honestly you should you deserve to be part of this ship you made it all the way around that one of the hardest punishments you deserve to be on this ship Two, be freed and allowed back on the ship where he would then slowly die to infections damn or three never mind <laughs> never mind and allowed back on the ship where he would then slowly die to infections or three, live the rest of his life single and being made fun of since he was now fully covered in scars from head to toe. Number seven. I thought women liked scarred men. <laughs> I, like, I thought they liked, like, makes you look more manly. Makes you look like, oh, wow, he's been through a lot. Like, I thought you were goaded for that. It is Men's Mental Health Month. Support the men. The men! Number seven, crushed by elephants. Now we are getting to the part of the list where living is no longer an option. This form of punishment has been used by many countries throughout history, but was most recently used by India in the 19th century, which is really not that long ago if you really think about it. Like, your great grandma could have witnessed one of these. What type of crimes would you have to commit to be crushed by an elephant, you might ask? Well, apparently if you fail to pay your taxes, that was good enough. And of course, stealing or being taxes? an enemy soldier was also a great way to become a tortilla. Failed to pay my but the taxes? most disturbing case in history was when the fourth Mughal emperor of India ordered an enormous amount of criminals to be crushed to death in a single day, simply because he was bored and needed some entertainment. The guy who forgot to pay his taxes, crushed. The man who stole an apple from the local market, crushed. What? The little orphan who jaywalked across the street, crushed. Oh, dear God! Who the... Who... Who is that that did that? Who did that? Because F that guy? That's not right. That's like you had me until the little orphan, bro. For failing to cross the street, bro. You had me into the little orphan, bro. The children? We put like the child, bro? The child? I was just about to say like, honestly, out of all these punishments so far, I think crushed by the elephant is the one that I want. But they giving this one up too easy, bro. I don't, I'm good. This one seems like it's, it's too easy to happen. Like you do anything, you're f***ed. The man who murdered his neighbor and added his remains to a large pot of tomato soup then fed that soup to his family and watched them eat it from the shadows with a creepy smirk on his face. Eh, he's alright. Apparently he makes a damn good soup. There are a few ways that this huh? public execution goes down, but one thing always stays the same. There's always a guy on top of the elephant controlling its every move. And this was very intentional. This showcase just how amazing the ruling class were. I mean, look at them. They can control an elephant. Now be impressed. The first method of execution was the one that you better pray for if this was going to be your fate. Here, the criminals would have their arms tied behind their back and their heads placed on a pedestal, where it was then crushed like a great ah! elephant's foot. Now, the second method is much more cruel. The criminal would be placed flat on the floor with their arms tied behind their backs. Then the elephants would be guided to walk over the person's body, and hopefully the criminal would die on the first go. But sometimes, they just end up crushing a leg or an arm and you so gotta keep going back and make forth you turn and Go try back again and forth and again back and, and forth again. back the final and forth worst way is when a highly trained elephant was guided to slowly crush the person limb by limb they would first crush the arms then the legs and then poke holes in them with the tusk until eventually dealing the final blow to the head or torso. This is the more theatrical route that rulers like the fourth mogul love to take and made for a truly traumatizing experience for everyone, except for the fourth mogul. My Hokage would it. never do this. Number six, impalement. 
probably one of the grossest and most cruel forms of punishment on the list. This has been used by a few countries throughout history, but was most recently- You want this? Yeah, I lied. I lied. I don't want the crushing anymore. You're right. Like, I don't- I I'll tell you which one is the best one at the end of this video, I think, that I think I would want to die by. So far, I'm not f***ing with any of them. Number six, impalement. Probably one of the grossest and most cruel forms of punishment on the list. This has been used by a few countries throughout history, but was most recently used in Egypt in the 17th century, usually against criminals that were highway robbers, grave thieves, or anyone who would try and start a rebellion. This punishment would start by having a criminal lay flat on their stomachs with their arms tied behind their back. They would then be sliced open with a razor to increase the size of their back door. And as what? soon as that decision was made, the cut would be lathered with paste to instantly stop the blood. They would then thrust in a long wooden stake that was the width of a man's arm, which was sharply tapered on one end. They then begin to hit the wooden <laughs> stake with the mallet, pushing it further and further in. And of course, the steak was greased up beforehand to make this process a lot smoother. And once the steak has popped out of the criminal's shoulder, head, or mouth, they were pretty much long gone. He is then planted next to a busy road, like a Halloween decoration, to remind everyone that this is what happens when you break the law. You see now this one, I'm not saying I'd want it to happen to me. You feel me? Like that's still wild, laying on my stomach and, and being impaled from behind. But like, how do I say this in the right way? There might be some enjoyment to it in the first in the first few minutes, right? Like obviously it's not going obviously it's not going up your butt, right? So it's not gonna be that enjoyable. But it's like there's just something about something going inside of you sometimes, anywhere, that that feels good before you finally feel the pain. Does that make sense? You know? Like you ever you ever like stick a needle in your finger? Right? And it feels good a little bit sometimes. It feels good a little bit sometimes until you feel the pain and you're like, that kind of hurt. But at first, it really felt good. They will be left there for the entire day and removed the following morning before the body begins to stink. But wait, there's another version of this as well. You see, on some occasions, the criminals would only be impelled just deep enough to keep them in place, but not too deep that it would cause immediate death. They would do this by having stakes that had a seated position on them to prevent the person from sliding down any further. They would then be placed on a busy road where they would suffer for hours and hours, oh pleading to people walking by for help oh until eventually succumbing to their wounds. Damn. Number five, Poena Cule. Poena Cule is Latin for penalty of the sack. And that's exactly what it was, just a lot more terrifying and cruel. This was an exclusive punishment for anyone that would murder their own family members. This was first seen in the second century in Rome, but would later be used by the Germans in the 18th century. This all begins with a convicted murderer being placed inside a thick leather bag. But okay. just to make sure the man isn't lonely, they would then add a dog, a rooster, a viper, and a monkey. I don't know animals did to deserve this but hey at least the evil family murderer doesn't die alone once all the animals are added inside the bag it is then sewn shut creating an almost airtight seal now you would think this would be horrible enough but no this is just the beginning then because they start as soon smashing as the, bag the sack is sewn shut it is then tossed into the ocean never mind but don't worry later on these murderers would be given the option to either be placed inside the leather bag or be sent to perform at the Colosseum, where they can perform the act of being mauled to death in front of all of their loved ones and peers. You know, at least they had the option. I'm taking the sack. I'm taking the sack. So far, I think I'm taking this death. I think I'm taking the sack so far. I'm not gonna lie. Just put in a sack, put me with a fucking viper, monkey, wolf, whatever, and just throw me in the water, all right? I'm not taking that bear, no way. Um, It's better than the impaling. Like, yeah, you get a little moan action with the impaling. You get a little, oh! thank you for penetrating me and i'll be cool at first you know like if you're just like horny on your deathbed but 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 i, I think i'd rather just like actually what if that's a slow death to drown to death why the snake is probably biting on you the monkey's jumping around the dog's going crazy i might have up on this one i'm not gonna lie this one this one might not be it let's keep going let's keep going i don't think so rats 
This is one of the most sick punishments in all of human history and it involves the use of rats. I will cover two of them here as they are very similar. The first use of this form of punishment dates back to 1568 during the rats, 80 rats. years war. A Dutch leader named Diedrich Sonoy would often use this method of punishment which involved placing a rat inside of a clay bowl, then placing it topside down on a prisoner's stomach, chest, face, or groin. Okay. Then the back of the bowl would be heated with either a torch or some coals, like heard causing this. the rat to go into a full-on panic Frenzy. trying to escape from the heat. And its only way out <laughs> is to <laughs> burrow <laughs> into the human. Once inside, it would continue to chew and tear apart whatever was in its way, desperately searching for a way out. Eventually, the rat finds its way out of the maze and survives. The same could not be said for the prisoner. I didn't see that part come. I did not see that part come burrow into the fucking human and just eat through its body until you found an exit is crazy dog what imagine feeling a rat inside you just fucking your shit up in there just fucking your shit up i don't want that one i don't think anybody should want that i thought the rat was gonna eat through the bowl for some reason or just nibble on your skin golly the mob did it back in the day that's crazy i'm not gonna lie that's crazy dog. but the second method was much much worse and was highly secretive since it was used under the guidance of the dictator Augusto Pinochet where he held power from 1976 through 1983. Oh, they crazy. called it the rectoscope. Oh, no. And I'm sure you have already figured out where this is going. Oh, yes, no. it's exactly what you think. They would place a tube on a prisoner's back door oh, and insert no. a rat inside of the tube. Oh, the rat no! would then begin to burrow its way in. These people were so sick that they actually expected the prisoners to answer questions while this was going on. Eventually, the rat would find its way in and begin to move forward to find its way out. Nobody really knows how many people died from this punishment, but we do know that a ton of people went missing when this dictator was in charge. Number three. Hell no. Haha, ha, I made a funny joke about getting penetrated before. I get it. I get it. You thought I was going to co-sign on this one too? I'm not. I'm not. I don't, no, hell no. I, I'd honestly go with the first one. I don't want to rat in my ass, bro. Number three. Gibbeting. The last known use was in the early 1900s in Afghanistan. This all came to light in 1921 when the National Geographic published this image in their magazine. This was also used in the United States from time to time during the 17th and 18th century. One notable example was in Boston, Massachusetts, where a few pirates were hung at the Boston Harbor, which served as a warning to any sailors that were approaching Boston. Now let's talk about England since they love this form of punishment so much. In England, this was used on traitors, murderers, pirates, and thieves. But after the year 1752, the Murder Act was passed, which required that all convicted murderers must be put to death by being publicly dissected or by gibbeting of some sort. And mm. over 134 confirmed people met this fate. The mm. most common form of gibbeting were actually cages and they looked like this. It was an all steel cage that was shaped tightly to the form of a human body, which was so tight that it would not allow the person inside to move. They were then hung 30 feet or more off the floor, usually on a public road or okay. water hole, to ensure that the most amount of people could witness this monstrosity. Okay. But I can only assume this was more annoying than anything, since every time you get thirsty and needed to fill up your container of water, you would have to deal with the dying man begging you for a sip. <coughs> But the annoyance and torture of the public didn't stop there. Because after the criminals would die in the cages, the body would be left inside to rot for years and years on end. With the locals Ew. complaining that the yeah. smell of death was so pungent that they couldn't even sleep at night. This gotta be the dumbest idea yet. Just have a bunch of fucking nasty ass rotting human corpses around. What's dumb? idea was it for this punishment this is terrible this is terrible there's even been reports that some human remains stayed inside of these cages for over 20 years 20 years you didn't want to clean it up finally remember to clean it out number two scaphism this was huh? a form of punishment that was used by the ancient Persian Empire on anyone that would be convicted of murder. First, the criminal would be placed inside of a boat on their backs and tied down. The boat had four holes cut out so that the person's arms and legs would be outside of the boat and in the water. They were then force-fed large quantities of honey and milk, 
until okay. their stomachs were visibly full. They would oh. then proceed to lather their entire body with the milk and honey as well. Yeah. After all these steps were completed, he was then pushed out to the middle of the lake where he was completely exposed to the heat of the sun. But the sun would soon become the least of his worries. You see, the reason they fed him milk and honey was not because it was a great last meal but because this combination causes a person to get extreme diarrhea, which oh, mixed with the sweet honey attracts rodents, bugs, wasps, bees, flies, and whatever other animals oh, live near the lake. Tormented by the animals throughout the entire night, you would think that the daytime maybe gets a little better. No, because as soon as the sun rises the following day, the person inside of the boat gets another gigantic meal of milk and honey what? with additional lathering. This would be done on a daily basis to prolong the punishment for as long as possible. It was also well documented that the rodents would continuously attempt to burrow inside of the person through their back door. They were probably trying to get a head start on their next meal. A writer named John Sonaris wrote in great detail about one of these incidents. He would go on to say that it was one of the most horrid and cruel forms of punishment. No, since it, it really was terribly is. long and seemed to have no end in sight. Oh, he wrote God. about a man who survived for an entire 17 days before he finally died from his wounds. Apparently, the man spent 17 days of rats crawling on my. 17 days and every day it just gets worse because more probably go up at, at a time now like after the like once the first rat gets up there it's like maybe the bull will recontract right because like it has kind of like a bit of an elasticity around it but then after a few days it just starts to get wider and then four rats can fit in there then a little bit wider then six rats can fit in there at one time and it's just like just can kill me just like just can kill me now. Like, I don't want to have to deal with this shit anymore. Just kill me. They're probably going in your mouth, too. Like, ah, oh, man. His last 17 days before he finally died from his wounds. Apparently, the man spent his last few days with his entire face completely covered with wasps and his flesh rotting away filled with swarms of parasites and worms, oh all while being covered in his own filth. Number one, the oubliette. The oubliette who? simply means to forget in French. This was a punishment that was used in many places throughout history, including in the London Tower, which had a small and confined room called Little Ease. Not only was this room pitch black, it was also so small that prisoners could not sit, stand, or lay down while inside they it. They would be crouch. left in this uncomfortable position for days on end. One of the most famous oubliettes is not the one in the London Tower, but in the neighboring district of Warwick, inside of Warwick Castle. Here, deep underground in the castle's dungeons, is a very small and narrow cell, completely made of oh, stone, which okay. has a metal door to close it shut. Prisoners you see shit like this in like Game of Thrones, right? This is like, this is what you see in like Game of Thrones. Okay, like that kind of, oh, that makes sense. That L, makes completely sense. made of stone, which has a metal door to close it shut. Prisoners were tossed inside of the cell and forgotten about, as the name implies. The prisoner would just have to sit there and wait for their inevitable death, which usually came in a few days from dehydration or starvation. Now, of course, this would be the best case scenario, because in reality, most of the time there would already be a rotting corpse inside of the cell to keep oh, the new prisoner company. No, the previous that's... occupier of the cell would serve as a daily reminder of his upcoming fate. But that's not the only companions that he will have, since the underground dungeons are are completely infested with rats that have developed a taste for human flesh. But wait, there's more. These oubliettes existed in many of the castles throughout Europe, and in recent times, they have actually discovered these dungeons with dozens, if not hundreds, of human remains inside of it oh as proof God. that they were hardly ever cleaned. Like in Leap Castle of Ireland, they just throw you where on in top 1900, another, during bro. the castle's renovation, a worker found a small opening behind a wall inside of the chapel. This hole had an 8-foot drop that led to a large oubliette. And what the worker found inside shocked him, since it was filled with so many skeletons that they needed multiple cartloads to clear it all out. But just Shiza. when you think this section is over, it just keeps on giving. You see, there's been many stories of men who have been placed inside one of these dungeons and kept alive for years and years on end, surviving off crumbs of food and minimal amounts of water, prolonging their inevitable demise for as long as that humanly possible. That boy's a possible. survivor! These cells were sometimes even placed on ground level so they can hear the voices and laughter of the people outside. That's so An sad. experience that they will never get again in this lifetime. That's the saddest ever!